Okay, um, I think we'll get started. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Cognitopia introductory webinar. Uh, I'm Tom Keating, here along with Julie Henning, and we'd like to thank you for your interest in Cognitopia and taking the time from your day for this webinar. This is being recorded, so you'll be able to go back and review anything you want to, but please also feel free to use the chat window to ask questions as we go along, if you like. The webinar controls on your end also allow us allow you to click a button to raise your hand if you want to get uh, our attention, and Julie will be helping to keep track of those things. You should see a black menu bar at the bottom of your window that will help you do that. Uh, but it, I've attended lots of webinars. This is our first time doing one, so let us know if there are any technical issues on your end, uh, and thanks in advance for your understanding if there are any on our side. Uh, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. So first off, I, I need to acknowledge that uh, Cognitopia and, and all the apps that we develop are made possible through grant funding from uh, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and also the U.S. Department of, of Education. Uh, and uh, we're really uh, grateful that we've been able to, to, to do what we, we, we have uh, through that uh, generous funding from those institutions. Uh, we are grant supported, so uh, in terms of access to Cognitopia on an ongoing basis, uh, it's free right now. Uh, that will not always be the case, but there will always be free trial access, and there'll be freemium access after a trial. So if you explore around and you try the application and uh, you don't want to continue uh, using it or don't want to subscribe to it, then you'll still have access to the, the work you've done and the and the things you've created uh, during that trial period. Um, and then what we're planning on is uh, when we uh, transition from grant funding, uh, which we're in the process of doing right now, we'll uh, offer monthly or yearly subscriptions that uh, will be, we hope, will be affordable. We're looking at like a Netflix style monthly uh, subscription uh, at, a, at that kind of a level. So. Uh, just wanted to let you know up front, you know, what our current uh, basis for operating is and, and what it'll be as we go along. Uh, our goal for today is to introduce you to Cognitopia's web-based suite of apps for self-determination and transition, uh, how to understand the dashboard, uh, how to create an account actually before that, if you haven't already done that, we'll walk through that. Uh, and then understanding the dashboard, uh, how to create relationships with other users, uh, using the support hub, if you're a, a teacher or a parent or a therapist and you're in a support position. Um, and then there's some other dashboard features like uh, providing feedback or asking questions of the, of the development team. And then we'll be working with three basic applications, routines, uh, goal guide, and my life. And uh, we'll be looking at those at a very basic levels. And we hope to be doing more of these webinars on a regular basis. That'll give you a lot more detail on, uh, on, on some of the nooks and crannies and powerful features that are available in, in Cognitopia. So really briefly, what I'm gonna do is show you just a handful of slides to, uh, uh, to give you a quick overview of what we're doing. And then uh, uh, we'll switch over to just using the apps and, and, and demoing that and uh, uh, walking through some, some basic elements of each of those applications that I've mentioned. The, uh, Cognitopia is a platform of self-management applications that's designed to be applicable uh, across the lifespan. Uh, our grant funding is focused on transition aged individuals in high school and 18 to 21 years old who are moving into adulthood. Uh, but we now have uh, users as young as uh, nine years old in elementary school using our applications and uh, a number of adults uh, as well. Uh, it's a way to maximize independence and self-direction uh, for the individual with, with, with cognitive disabilities, but also it's a tool to facilitate support uh, that can be provided as needed or not needed. So knowing when someone needs help and when they don't. And the, the ultimate goal is to improve transition and self-determination at all levels. Of, uh, of, the, of the lifespan. Uh, we 
employ universal design techniques that uh, provide alternate means of accessing content. So there's uh, uh, often text and image and video uh, alternative representations of the same content uh, for any users who need that. Uh, we use a lot of task analysis and video modeling uh, techniques uh, that are built into the applications. Uh, there are lots of reminders and status notifications on how someone's doing and progressing through their goals. Uh, and we support both uh, sides of, 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 of our user base, so individuals with cognitive, dis cognitive disabilities and, and, and teachers and families. And so there are a number of ways to provide virtual support and to uh, us make assignments to, to, to multiple people, students or uh, you know, people who are being supported. Uh, and uh, uh, very easily. Uh, and we're finally, we're web-based, so we are platform agnostic. We, uh, uh, it works on any device, and it works on uh, uh, any platform as well. So iOS, Windows, uh, uh, Android, uh, laptop, tablet, phone, uh, it doesn't matter what you use it on. Uh, so uh, as I said, I'm gonna run through some overview slides to, to kind of establish some concepts and then, and then we'll dive in. Uh, this is what the dashboard uh, looks like uh, when you log into Cognitopia. Whoops, excuse me. Move that back up there. Uh, these are the basic tools you use. Uh, there's a way to, uh, uh, there's, what we're looking at in the dashboard right now is something called Support Hub, but there are notifications that you get from the people you're connected with on Cognitopia. It's very much of a connected, team-oriented uh, approach to, to, to self-management. Uh, there's a way to, to, to build those teams. Uh, as I said, there's a way to ask for help and, and get feedback uh, and some simple settings that have to do with uh, turning on text-to-speech or turning it off. Uh, and then there's some application-specific settings uh, as well. Uh, so uh, the basic framework for what I'm going to show you uh, today, you know, can be described as do it, track it, and show it, or do it, track it, and share it. Uh, and the way to do that is with three of our, our key applications. The uh, first one is called Routines, uh, and it's a way to get information about how to accomplish tasks, routines, activities uh, at home, at school, in the community. Uh, goal guide is a way to take uh, routine activities and track progress on them over time. And my life is an e-portfolio application that allows you to, to share anything that you've tracked anywhere in Cognitopia with uh, other people. Uh, it's, we've used it, it mostly to date in the context of IEP teams and it's a tool for IEP self-direction uh, as well. So when you start with routines, uh, as I said, it makes it easy to create task analyses for any content domain uh, using text images or video. So uh, uh, a task analysis is a, a way of breaking down any activity into component steps uh, that can be as granular as they need to be to teach an individual to perform that activity. And in routines, you can add text, images, or video at any step of that routine. You can share routines with others. And in addition to creating your own routines, you can use routines from a community library. So uh, the, the application has been designed to encourage people to share the routines that they create and uh, make those available to other people in the Cognitopia community. And finally, if you want to use routines in a way that's not web-based, <clears throat> you can print out any task analysis and you can also print out assistance sheets that help uh, uh, teachers or support people uh, make notes about how someone is doing with, a, with learning a routine. You can uh, add levels of assistance, uh, whether someone needs a physical or verbal or gestural prompt, say, uh, to perform a certain step. This is what routines looks like, and it, as it's divided into my routines and community routines. 
And at the top of this page, we see that it says My Routines. And then there's a set of icons across the top or tiles that represent different aspects of, of activity. Community, home, personal, uh, school, and work. And those buttons uh, serve as filters to filter the different content that appears below. So this is the entire set of content that is available in my routines. And uh, I can use those buttons to just isolate, you know, uh, locate this ac activities that are specific to a location or a, a domain of, 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 of life. And then if I want to use, see what's in the community library, I click on browse community and I see something that looks very similar, except I have access to a much broader range of applications. Uh, here's what a routine looks like. <clears throat> this one happens to be for uh, making French toast, and it illustrates how you can, uh, as I said, have images or video uh, at any step. And we'll see how this works. Basically, when you click on a video, uh, a, a window pops up, and then you can watch the, the French toast video. <clears throat> In this case, that gives you an overview how to do that. Uh, you know, and then there are different steps for things that may require additional video support. In this case, cracking an egg in a shallow dish and, and using a fork to beat it. Uh, we often think of task analysis in terms of like functional daily living kinds of routines, but it can apply to a range of skill domains. So in this case, uh, it, there's a routine here that helps a, a, a high school student who may not already have an Oregon ID card, uh, gives them the steps that they need uh, to do that. And even if a student uh, can't complete all of these steps on their own, the really important thing is that you're, you're, you're communicating a sense of self-management and letting someone plug in to the steps that they can complete. And, and, and you're also providing a vehicle for structuring the interaction between uh, uh, an instructional assistant or a support person in an independent living setting so that it, it promotes self-management and it helps people uh, get that sense. And in, in a sense, a, a routine like this could function as a kind of curriculum to guide people through, uh, how to, through the process of supporting someone. As I said, you can print out uh, written products that you can use in, an, in, an, in an offline. Uh, a lot of times people will take task analyses and they'll print them out and laminate them. And so we added that feature to uh, 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 routines as well. <clears throat> In this case, on the left, you see a set of printed steps that shows uh, the steps of putting on deodorant. And it's actually this uh, illustration incorporates a bit of, uh, of, 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 of social thinking about uh, why you put on deodorant and, and why it's important. And then on the other side is one of the assistance guides uh, for the French toast activity that, uh, as you can see, it doesn't have the pictures at each step and you can't watch video, but it uh, does provide a way to rate assistance and make any notes that someone who's in a teaching or support position might want to, 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 to provide. So that's routines. And uh, routines, again, is a way to just find out how to do things and to get guidance. Now you may have routines that, uh, and activities that you do that you wanna track over time, okay? And that's where Goal Guide comes in. So you can import routines into Goal Guide to create goals that you wanna do progress tracking. You can also create routines in Goal Guide. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's got similar tools to, uh, uh, to, to routines for doing that and uh, that is, a goal guide is where if you want to schedule things, track them and schedule them and add notifications, then you can do that. Uh, and uh, I'll go over a couple of things here that show you how to do that. So goal guide can be used for scheduling. It, uh, you know, here we have an example of a, a student who has a schedule broken into different chunks of the day. And you see in, in the middle here, there's home in the morning. And he might have a, a schedule that looks something like this. He's got a goal guide category called personal health. And within that, he's got some goal activities uh, that help him you know, get out of the house and, and, and you know, do the things that he, he wants to do each morning. So scheduling personal routines and goals. Uh, and then if we look at a specific uh, one of these, like say, uh, 
take a daily shower. Uh, we've got a large image that, that illustrates what that is. We've got steps. Some of these, uh, as you can see, where we're showing how you cross out a task uh, of each goal and, and on the way to completing it. And when you do that, they get a line through them and the image recedes. Um, when you mark something complete, you get a data point on your graph that shows how you're doing and that other, other people on your team can see to know that you're progressing through your goals and completing those things uh, the way you want. There's also a little place for adding notes. Um, these can be progress notes or comments on, on how a person's doing. It can be, you know, a reason for, uh, you know, why you did or didn't do uh, an activity. So lots of things you can do with those notes. Here's another illustration of, uh, the, we saw, I showed you in, in, in routines, the routine for putting on deodorant. So same thing, just shows a little different look on the, on the, on the data graph in that the area under the graph is filled in with, uh, with, with some solid color. Uh, just as a side note, where uh, as we continue to develop these applications, we're really working on data visualization and ways beyond line graphs or line graphs with the area filled in below them in this case um, that help uh, end users understand their data in really interesting and, 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 and cognitively accessible ways. Um, so we've, create, we've looked at a routine, uh, we've looked at how you can track a routine in Goal Guide, and then if we look at uh, the, the My Life application, <clears throat> My Life is basically a multimedia e-portfolio application. It lets, it's, it, it, it is in some sense a uh, person-centered planning tool, and, and, and it's more than anything, it's a tool currently for IEP or you know, ISP self-direction, IEP, Individualized Education Plan, ISP, Individualized Service Plan, for, uh, that often occurs on the adult side. Uh, so either one of those can be done in a person-centered planning uh, process. The key things are, is, are that it, we're attempting to transfer control for building a sense of, of, of what a person's life is to them. And uh, I'll show you an example here uh, of what uh, my life uh, looks like currently. So this one is set up with categories uh, that represent IEP uh, categories. We have strengths, interests, preferences, needs, accommodations, and then at the bottom, progress and annual goals. Uh, and if you'll notice, uh, uh, it does have a, 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 a conceptual mapping or person-centered planning uh, kind of look to it. Uh, any of these posts in here I can click on, and here's one. I've got, I'm tracking progress in my uh, personal domain, and the thing I'm tracking, tracking in there is putting on deodorant, and if I was to click on that, this is what I would see. So my life makes it possible for you to take your goal, your graph that you created in Goal Guide, and insert that in a live, continuously updating way into your My Life portfolio. So you could see if someone was presenting this <coughs> at their IEP meeting, and we've had uh, a couple of dozen students now so far as part of our research side of what we do, who have taken My Life and used it to lead their own uh, IEP meetings. Uh, they would be getting a real-time update of, 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 of this kind of a graph. Now, you know, probably they may or may not be sharing the fact that they've gotten better at putting on deodorant, uh, but uh, that uh, turns out to be an actually really important uh, skill that sort of uh, slips under the radar for a lot of people and affects their work readiness as they're trying to transition to adulthood and get jobs. Uh, the other thing that happens in my life, as you can see here, is that you can show your progress but you can also reflect on it and, and make posts that, that add to that. You know, in this case, it's you know, uh, noting I'm really working on making sure I put on deodorant. It's part of my daily routine because it will help me get a job. And you know, there's some images there that help uh, uh, underscore that as well. Uh, so that's it for the slides. I am gonna switch over into live demo mode here.
and I, that'll take me just a second to uh, do that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is show you our website. Uh, and uh, it's changing constantly, it'll be changing again. But if you come to the website and you want, you, you look around, you can learn something about our, 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 our applications by clicking on any of these uh, items. One of the reasons it'll be changing is because you don't even see routines on here uh, at this point. Uh, it, it appeared much more recently in our application suite after we uh, finished this version of the website. But you can go here and you can click on Start Now, and that'll put you into the process of creating an account. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back a second and I'm going to show you also a, a place that I want to make sure you don't get confused because you might miss that Start Now button. And instead, uh, let me just go back and make sure I'm not going too fast on that. Okay. So here's start now on the left side of the middle of the screen. Uh, up at the top, there's this control for logging in. And if you had, don't have an account yet, you might be tempted to think you're signing up here by putting your information in. But in order to sign up, you have to click this link that says sign up uh, right below uh, login. So let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> and I'm gonna say, I'm Tom Keating. Next step is that my email is Cognitopia, uh, and I'm going to use a, a way we have of testing uh, emails here, uh, or testing new accounts. I'm going to put that in again. I'm going to make a password that has at least eight letters, and I don't think we get any stricter than that. I'm going to put my phone number in, and the reason I'm going to put my phone number in is because uh, that will allow me to get uh, reminders and notifications through uh, text message or uh, multimedia message with, uh, service, which is uh, text message with images. Uh, I also need to put in an age, and it's not because we're from the Census Bureau. It, it, this is part of the Children's Online uh, Privacy and Protection Act that uh, requires that you have to be 13 or older to enter uh, your, your own, uh, to, to create an account. So we'll go ahead and put 13 on there. We do have students younger than that using it now with parent, you know, parental authorization, uh, but <clears throat> just go ahead and put 13. And you don't have to answer any of these questions here, uh, but if you do, it's, uh, it'll help. Uh, and if you answer other, we don't badger you about it, okay? So now I created my account, and I'll be uh, going to my dashboard here in a second. And this is what my dashboard uh, looks like. So uh, when you log into Cognitopia or create a new account, uh, you won't, uh, actually, when you log in, you will not see all of these applications. You'll just see two applications, Do and Goal Guide, and, and then you can uh, ask to see uh, all of your apps. And uh, if I do that, I see all my installed apps, and I see available apps. And this, if, uh, there are, you will, the available apps that you will see will not be these because this is my, our, my development view. But uh, any app that's down here, routines may not appear. If it appears down here, you just click install and it'll move up into your uh, installed apps area. So don't be confused by that. Uh, up here on the upper left, whoops, excuse me, uh, is uh, a, like a profile uh, area that gives you notifications. If anyone's sent you a, an invitation to connect with them, uh, uh, it'll appear there. Uh, there's a way to chat with people on your team, and then there's a way to go to your, your profile and also s sign out. Over here on the right is your easiest way to uh, move around in the applications. Uh, you just click on that apps menu, and then you can go back to our website, You can and you can launch any applications uh, that we have on the platform there uh, as well. Uh, moving down, if you go to relationships, <clears throat> that's where you connect with someone new. Uh, this is going to be 
uh, an important thing to do. If, when you create an account, you should connect with someone right away. And if you click on connect with someone new, uh, I will say, let me go ahead and collect with Julie Cognitopia. And I'm gonna say, you know, uh, a little fun message there. Really important is that you identify the relationship because if, uh, if, if, you, if you're a student, a teacher, and you're connecting with a student uh, or a parent, uh, connecting with a son or daughter, <coughs> then, excuse me, <coughs> you uh, uh, will get special support hub privileges when you have a support relationship that you've identified. So I'm gonna identify Julie as a student and I'm going to send her uh, an invitation to connect. <clears throat> She'll get that invitation. Uh, and then, uh, you know, when she accepts it, she'll show up in my support hub. So in the support hub, uh, you have uh, everybody who you're connected to. And you can click on any one of those people. And let's click on, <clears throat> on Brian. And these are the controls that appear for you. There's a team chat that you can, if anybody on the team, now Brian I think has a pretty modest team. So he's just got me and, uh, and, his, and, and another person on there. Uh, but any people who are on the support team have access to this, the team chat. Uh, and then you, the most important things to know here at an introductory level is that you can click on any of these application buttons and go right into that a view only way of looking at that person's uh, thing. So here's Brian's listing one of his strengths, that he's good with computers, and you know some of the reasons why he likes to do that. Uh, if we go back to his hub, uh, and we can look into his goal guide application and see what he's doing there. <clears throat> so he's got some different goals around here that we can look at, and we haven't looked at goal guide uh, too much yet, but I'll, uh, we'll, we'll explain more about that. So that's the support hub. Uh, there's a help area, uh, and that has some frequently asked questions in it. Uh, there are some other help resources that are application specific that I'll show you about. And then there's a place to tell us what you think or to report a bug, and this is really easy. We love hearing from people, uh, and uh, we love hearing criticisms and suggestions because that's the only way we know what people need and how to improve what we're doing. So this is the question, first question is, what is your feedback about? And you know, tell us what you want to say. You can add a file if you want. If you go to report a bug, it's name the bug and say, uh, you know, just when I click this thing, you know, it exploded or something. You know, uh, we don't expect you to be professional bug reporters, but if you want to uh, harangue us about anything, that's the way to do it. Uh, we looked at the uh, we looked at the apps uh, area already, so I'm not going to go back into that. And then in settings, there are some general settings, the most important of which is text to speech. Well, also uh, time zone and language. Uh, we're working on putting uh, alternate languages in here <clears throat> at the level of, of a Google Translate uh, kind of uh, capability, and then moving on from there to, to more customized. Uh, uh, localization, language localization. Uh, like I said, text-to-speech is the most important thing, and, and then we also are working on uh, speech input, and, and that works. It's not fully implemented throughout the program, but it's something you can experiment with uh, if you like. Okay, so that's the dashboard in a nutshell. Um, let me go back to... Uh, Here, um, okay, I am gonna do something here and that is take this out of the screen mode so I can see some of those uh, other controls. And then do it like this. I'm gonna turn off my video so that I don't obscure uh, part of the screen there. So, uh, but I'm still here. Okay, great. 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is go into some of the specific applications. Okay, I'm in the dashboard, I'm in my settings, I'm going over to the apps menu here, and I'm going to say, let me load routines. Okay, so here I have uh, uh, my routines, and right now I've only got a couple of categories in here. I've got home and personal. Okay, so maybe there's something, you know, just to keep the thread going that we were using earlier. I have something I want to do that's in my personal domain, uh, and it involves hygiene. And these are the three routines that are available to me in hygiene. I could load one of those and, and just scroll through and see what the steps are. I can mark, mark them complete. Uh, and something else to know about routines is that you can share them with anyone you want. So here's where the importance of connections really comes in and building relationships in Cognitopia. I could email this, a link to this routine to anybody. They don't even have to be part of the Cognitopia community. Or I could text it to them uh, and they would get it and they'd have that routine instantly available to, as a guide. But if I share it with one of my connections, then everybody who I'm connected to comes up here. And this is where the, that virtual support capability that I referred to earlier comes into play or sometimes what people call the one-to-many capability. So anybody who's on this list, if I click that, their box, <clears throat> and then I say, send it, then it's gonna go to them uh, and appear in their own collection of routines. So very powerful in terms of saving time by making assignments to, to, to multiple people all at, all at the same time. Uh, here's the daily shower uh, routine. And, you know, again, as I said earlier, you can look at videos. Now, what, something important to know about videos is you can add your own videos. You can, but we, well, you can add your own videos, but we made it really easy to also harvest video from uh, YouTube or Vimeo uh, <clears throat> or, or other like direct URL entry kinds of ways. Now, this is a video that I just harvested from YouTube and, you know, it, you know, so taking a shower, it's probably one of my favorite Shows this guy, you know, taking a shower and, you know, kind of being very engaging. Uh, one thing to, to, to know about videos is you might think, I'm going to pause that for a second. One thing you might think is that that kind of a, a video is kind of distracting for people. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you that it's not. That uh, people who do a good job of producing videos on YouTube do it in a way that makes it engaging and draws uh, users in and gets them to focus on it. Now, if you, uh, uh, if you keep watching this video, <clears throat> and this should be one that you would be able to see in community routines, because I've shared it with the community, uh, you know, you, you can form your own opinion, but he makes some really useful points about the importance of uh, how to shower. Simple things, start at the top, you know, do your hair first, uh, but kind of important things. And then there are lots of other steps in there. Okay. Now, uh, uh, those are my routines. Now, uh, it, if I browse the community, I can see other things. I'm going to clear the filters on here and we'll see, you know, maybe there's something, uh, these are the videos that right now are, are available in the community. Let me, I should say that we are transitioning a, a ton of video uh, uh, links that are on our developmental site over to our, our public facing site uh, this week. So you'll very soon see that the community uh, routines library is a lot more populated uh, than it looks uh, right here. But let's say, you know, I'm looking to do something at home uh, and it's a chore and that narrows it down to a couple of things here. And one of those is uh, clean the bathroom. Uh, actually, it's the advanced routine for cleaning the bathroom. And we know it's advanced because it starts with dusting the ceiling, which uh, I'm not sure I always knew that you started cleaning the bathroom by dusting the ceiling, but that just goes to show you uh, what, what routines can do for you. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's an example of, and you can flip back and forth between your routines 
and, <clears throat> and community routines. And if you're in community routines and you see something that you'd like to make uh, your own, you can, uh, first of all, you can favorite, favorite it so that you can get to it again <clears throat> really easily and you can edit a copy and, and adopt it as your own routine as well. You can also turn a routine into a goal and that's what I'll show you, uh, show you next here. But let, uh, actually, let's do something really simple here. Uh, let's create a, a, a new routine, okay? So I'm gonna go into my routines and I'm gonna say, uh, I wanna add a new routine. Uh, <clears throat> I can take it from the community. I could import something from Goal Guide uh, or uh, I could uh, copy one of my own routines because I wanna do something different with it. But let's start new, okay? And I'm going to say, okay, uh, well, I'll, what I'm going to do for this routine is I'm going to say, uh, I want to make, uh, make, a, make cereal. <clears throat> so this will take something really simple. Whenever you add an image in Cognitopia, you can search directly in Google Images. If you have images on Facebook that you want uh, collected and you want to use those, you can use those. You can use Instagram. If you're on a mobile device, you can get an image from your camera. And you can also choose a file right off your, your computer. But let's go ahead <clears throat> and uh, I'll search on Google and I'll say, um, let me get an image for a cereal bowl. Okay, there's a great image for a cereal bowl. I'll take that one. <clears throat> now I've got the first thing and uh, uh, making cereal is the name of this routine. Okay, and that is a home, could be a home or could be personal. I'm gonna put it in home and eating and uh, breakfast. So those are the ways I'm gonna flag this so that when I click those uh, icon filters, it'll show me what I, uh, what I wanna, wanna see. Okay, get rid of that guy there. <clears throat> I'm going to say next. Okay, so now I've got my routine for making cereal. Uh, I'm going to add a step. Now I say uh, step one is uh, uh, get cereal. Pick a cereal. How about that? Pick a cereal. Uh, and again, I'm going to add an image. Go here. And I'm going to go just enter cereal. And, uh, oh yeah, there are lots of good ones there. Let's just go with Captain Crunch and make it easy. Uh, okay, let's try another one here. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go with mini weights instead. Uh, and uh, pick a cereal, great. Uh, I'm gonna add another step, you know, get the milk, whoops. Get the milk out. Okay, and whoopsie. I'm gonna add another image here for milk. Milk carton. Okay, great. I've got the uh, milk. Gonna upload that. Great. Now I've got that, and you can see I could keep going on and doing this, okay? But now I've got my new routine, uh, and it's pick cereal, get the milk out. The most important step of making cereal, if you have kids, is actually putting the milk back in the refrigerator. <clears throat> so I would wanna add that uh, here as well. But, you know, I could uh, add another step here, and, uh, you know, just, I could have a video, making cereal is pretty easy, so I may not need a video uh, for that. But let's say uh, I did want to do that, okay? Let me go over here, whoopsie. And I'm gonna edit this. I'm not changing anything about the categories, but I'm gonna go over here and, and here and say pour the milk. And uh, We'll go out on a limb here and say, uh, let's search YouTube and say, uh, uh, I don't know. They may have a, they may, there may be a, a pouring a glass of homebrewed mouth weight through now. Yeah. Well, you never know what you're going to get on the internet, but let's just say, oh, I'm, I'm, I misspelled it. 
how to pour a glass of milk, the basics of milk pouring, how to pour, let's go with how to pour a glass of milk. We'll say, okay, I want to use that video and I want to watch it first before I use it. So I'm going to start it. And let's just say, I like that video. So I'm going to choose it. And then I'm going to finish the edits. So now I've got my, my cereal routine and I've got my video for pouring the milk and uh, looks like I'll be good to go with that. Okay, so that's the, the basics of routines. Uh, now let's say uh, I've, got my, I've got a routine, uh, it's personal routine, and let's say it is uh, taking a daily shower. And this is something that I wanna track and I wanna put it into goal guide, okay? So I say, okay, I wanna make a new goal out of this. I'll open that up and I'm into the goal guide application now. So it's saying take a daily shower. I've got different categories in here. So I'm gonna say uh, that what I wanna put this in is a new category, okay? And I'm gonna call it, uh, let's just call it, uh, let's call this one health. I've already got a, a, a personal health thing. I'm gonna give it a color and I'm gonna add another picture. Health, I'm gonna search for health. And <clears throat> I like that one there. So I'm gonna upload that. Great, now I've got my health category and uh, it's created. Now I've got take a daily shower, it's in health. Take a daily shower is something that repeats. So I mentioned earlier that you can schedule things and repeat them in Goal Guide. So I'm gonna say this repeats every day and uh, it says 7 p.m. right now, so I'm gonna change that to a.m. over here. And I'll say, okay, I wanna take a shower every day at 8 a.m. and I want some reminders. So the default setting is 10 minutes before the first event. And, and I'm gonna say, because I've entered my phone number, I'm gonna say, send me an MMS reminder 10 minutes before. And on my phone or on the application, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm in it, I'll see a reminder that says, you know, time to take a shower, and I'll have the image of, of, of the shower activity there. I can set a second reminder, you know, if I want to do a countdown and get another one at five minutes, say, uh, before. And then I, the only other thing I do is I choose how I want to track this. Do I want to track it by basic completion? Did I do it or didn't I? Uh, do I want to track it by uh, a happiness measure, which is a smiley face, frowny face scale that will let me say, I felt really good to take a shower today. Um, you know, I'm really happy I did that. Uh, how many how many minutes did it take me to take a shower? So there's all kinds of ways that you can track different metrics. You know, if 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 if, if we were creating a goal for uh, doing a, like a, a certain therapy exercise or maybe taking a test in school, you know, we want to track it in terms of percentages. Uh, or if again, if it was an exercise, the number of repetitions or the number of times I did it. For showering, I'm just gonna say for right now, it's basic completion. Uh, this is not an introductory feature over here. It says require a completion image, but you can, if you check that box, when, when the individual completes a goal, they'll have to uh, snap a picture on a mobile device that shows you uh, that, that the criterion state for that activity is achieved. So if the uh, activity was create, taking medication and you wanted them to show you a picture of an empty pill container, uh, you know, you could, you could check Yay! the required completion. There's some applause that happens when you're done uh, making that goal. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna say, okay, we're done with that. Uh, we liked it so much we decided to do it twice. So here's my goal now in health. I've got my shower. It's way past uh, 7 a.m., but I did just uh, I did take a shower this morning, so I'm, I'm entitled to complete this. Uh, now notice that you 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 can complete or not all these subtasks here. If I complete them all and I check this complete the the check mark at the top, I'll it'll, I'll get a data point on my graph that doesn't have any data points yet, but it will as soon as I complete this. If I kick this uh, completion button and I haven't done all the tasks, it'll say 
you haven't done all the tasks, do you still want to complete the goal? And I'm going to say, okay, complete the goal. Great. And now there's my data point. Doesn't look like much of a graph because I only have one data point. Okay. So that is the basic way that you can, you, you uh, create a goal uh, from routines. Okay. You can also say, go into that same category and add a new goal of whatever kind you want. You know, like I just said, take medication. You know, so we might want to have one to do that, but it looks exactly the same as if you imported it from someplace else. You add an image. Uh, well, if you import a routine from routines and it already has an image, then that's pre-filled. But you would add an image, add your title, make sure it's in the category you want, and then just move through and uh, add your timers and your repeating uh, elements, and 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 then you'd be done. Okay, so. Now let's go to my life, okay? Uh, so again, I'm going over to my apps menu and I'm going down to the available apps that I have here. And this one is, is my life. And uh, as I, uh, uh, you, this is a similar profile to the one that I showed you on the slides. And if I click on personal here, you'll see that there's the putting on deodorant. Uh, graph as well. Looks like I'm falling down on the job there a little bit. Last time was April 13th. Okay, so we'll go back to my uh, uh, my my life uh, portfolio. Uh, you know, and I have lots of different things here. Uh, you know, uh, I've got preferences. You know, I really prefer when people speak directly to me. So you know, some people use this in a. Uh, uh, what works and what doesn't work for me. Uh, kind of a, a personal, like I said, a person-centered plan or a one-page profile kind of a, a, an idea. These categories, I, I need to note, are all customizable, okay? So uh, strengths, interests, preferences, needs, accommodations, progress, annual goals, these are all IEP categories. But these can be uh, customized to be whatever you want. Uh, we have people now who are using this for something called pre -ets. And if you're in uh, the transition area or adult services and working in the employment domain, then you'll be familiar with what uh, pre -ets is. The other, uh, so, okay, now I've got my take showers thing. It did appear there. Okay, so I've got my, uh, my graph. So I'm not sure what was going on there. But I, what I mainly wanted to illustrate is that that's the share it part of tracking it. Uh, do it, track it, and share it, okay? That uh, you basically use my life to uh, kind of show all, all kinds of things that, 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 you're, uh, that are important, that are, that are, that are skill-based and, and, and goal-based uh, in school. Uh, so I want to show you a couple more features of my life here. I mentioned earlier that we've had a number of students use this application to run their own IEP meetings. And uh, the way they do that is they populate their portfolios, they uh, post about the things that they're doing all year long, and then when it's time to, 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 for their IEP meeting, they come over here to this menu and they say, okay, now I wanna present this information. So uh, I've got some goofy stuff here from a, a trip I had to New York uh, uh, not long ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of my strengths is like, I like to explore crazy places to eat. And this one's called Barney Greengrass on the Upper West Side of uh, Manhattan. Uh, now I'm going through all these things here. And as you notice, as this goes down, I'm scrolling down and on the left side of the screen over here, I'm seeing my progress through all of these different uh, categories there. Students use this, they can start the timer so that they uh, keep track of what they're doing and they don't spend uh, too much time on any one thing. Uh, and then they can go back to their, their My Life portfolio and, and, and show folks other aspects of, their, of, of, of what they're doing. Um, if we have just a couple more minutes, I'll, let, me, let me show you a fully realized uh, My Life portfolio. that a transition student used to, uh, OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to log in, and I'm going to log in as me. Uh, I should point out something here. Actually, I'm going to, when you log in to Cognitopia, if you check this save for quick login box here, then you will get a quick list of all the logins you want to use, which for teachers can be very helpful. Uh, as long as you're uh, in control of your computer. Okay, so I'm going to go to my support hub. I'm going to show you uh, the My Life app uh, portfolio for a student who has worked with us and has given us permission to share <coughs> uh, what he's doing. This is a guy named Kyle who uh, was really focused on becoming, uh, getting into the cooking area after he finished his uh, school. So in his, uh, in his My Life portfolio under annual goals, he said, I want to, my post school goal is I want to work in a food truck. Uh, but his short term objective is that he would be willing to work in a coffee shop to get experience with customers in a real setting. Okay, if we go back to his, uh, his portfolio, we can see that like he, he put in his strengths category, he created a, a number of things, and this is one of the coolest, but he and his teacher made a video that showed uh, what he was capable of doing in the kitchen based on his own, uh, on his own and also what he had done through a cooking class. Okay, so he really likes Jimmy Buffett too. He's got a Jimmy Buffett soundtrack going there. Uh, if we go back to his portfolio, we can see under needs, uh, he got an opportunity to interview uh, for a sous chef job at a local uh, cafe last summer. And he talked about the things that he needed for that. They talked about some of the hidden rules around his employment there. Uh, and then he finally, he got the job. So he got a paid job last summer for uh, six weeks. And then he went in, in, in his uh, portfolio, he made a post about what he learned uh, working at Hot Mama's Wings about uh, plating vegetables, when he did it, and how long he did it, uh, making bacon bits. Uh, and he's a guy who, uh, in his personal learning style, has indicated he really likes video and uh, learning from video a lot. Uh, so that is pretty much uh, what I wanted to, to, to cover with folks. Um, I, the, the only other thing that you might appear on your, your dashboard as well is an application called Do. Uh, and uh, Do is an application, it's basically a simplified version of Goal Guide. It shows you just what you're supposed to be doing like right now. So I'm supposed to be swimming at the YMCA in three minutes. I'm not going to make it. Uh, and then if there were any steps that I needed to remember about using the YMCA, scanning my card in, going to the locker room, whatever the task analysis for swimming at the YMCA is, it would be appear uh, down here. And then as soon as I mark that complete, then the next thing that it says, okay, how many laps did you swim? Uh, let me say I did 20. And on my, I'm looking at uh, this right now. The next thing that comes up, is, um, I don't know, <laughs> you never know what's going to pop up on your schedule. I'm supposed to be doing a guided visualization for relaxation. The point is that whatever comes up into this focus frame at the top of the Do app is what you're supposed to be doing, how much time you have to be doing it, and any steps that it takes to do that. Okay, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad I remembered that because that is one of the apps uh, that you'll have access to and, uh, you know, I wouldn't have wanted to leave without doing that. So um, that is Cognitopia. And uh, if you have any questions that you couldn't think of right now, or you want any more information, uh, just feel free to, to, to contact us. Uh, if I switch back over to my, uh, uh, my machine, my uh, uh, PowerPoint here, and share that then you'll have access to our email addresses at the bottom of the, the, the page there. So uh, again, just email us or send us a note through the application. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, we'll try to help you out. Appreciate your attendance at the, the, the webinar today. And again, it will be recorded 
uh, it'll, it'll take us a little bit to get that uh, uh, up onto the website, but it will be available for uh, folks uh, going forward. I'm going to say, turn my video back on here just to say thanks and uh, uh, let, ask for any final questions here. Okay, I see someone's uh, on the chat here, uh, and Julie's just saying thank you all for coming. All right, so we will wrap it up, and uh, thanks again.